Now I get quite a few questions on my generator related videos and by far one of the most common questions I get is do I need a 30 amp power inlet box or transfer switch or do I need a 50 amp power inlet box or transfer switch? So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's go. Alrighty, so here I have two different kinds of Reliance brand power inlet boxes. So one of these boxes is a 30 amp power inlet box and one is a 50 amp power inlet box. They both look the same from the outside. They have the same dimensions. On this one, if we open it up, you will see it's got three prongs inside of it. And of course, this is where your female end of your generator cable would then go in and twist lock into the power inlet box. So this one has three prongs. And then this one over here, again, they're both the same dimensions. If we open it up, this one has four prongs. So they each had a different number of prongs. This one had three, this one had four. So which one is the 30 amp and which one is the 50 amp? I would venture to guess that most people would guess that this one with the four prongs is the 50 amp power inlet box. And you would actually be incorrect. The one with the three prongs is actually the 50 amp power inlet box. So what is going on between these two boxes and why does the smaller one have four prongs instead of three? Well, the four prongs are for each of your different wires that are coming from your generator cord. You're gonna have a ground, a neutral, and then two hots. Whereas on the 50 amp power inlet box, you've got two prongs that are for your hots and you've got one for your neutral. And then the ground is not one of these prongs at all. It's actually this piece of metal up here at the top. That is actually where your ground gets connected. Also, if we look at the power inlet boxes together, if you look at the prongs, there's a pretty noticeable size difference between the 30 amp prongs and the 50 amp prongs. The 50 amp prongs are quite a bit beefier and thicker than the 30 amp prongs are over here. But now let's look at the insides of these power inlet boxes. So again, we've got our 30 amp power inlet box over here and you look at the size of this green wire. This wire size is number 10 or 10 gauge wire, which is suitable for up to 30 amps. If we come over here to the 50 amp power inlet box, look at how much wider and how much thicker this wire is. There is a huge noticeable difference between the two grounding wires. And that's gonna be reflective of the other wires that would be installed with this as well, with the neutral and the hots. Now the grounding wire size of this 50 amp power inlet box is number eight. It's eight gauge wire. Now for me personally, when I'm installing a 50 amp power inlet box, I like to run six gauge wire. Some will argue that eight gauge is enough, but it's gonna completely depend on the kind of wire that you install. But I prefer to install six gauge wire because I know that I'm covered and have big enough wire. But as far as this grounding wire goes for just bonding the box and it being as short as it is, the number eight in this box is completely fine for this 50 amp application. But all the rest of my wires, if I was installing this today, I would be using six gauge wire to connect this then to my panel. And of course, another big difference between the two here on the 30 amp, the holes are a little bit smaller than over here on the 50 amp and the lugs inside. I know they're hard to see with the camera, but the lugs inside of the 50 amp are much beefier and a lot wider than the ones over here on the 30 amp. Also something to note that Reliance finally fixed and why I did not buy a 50 amp Reliance box last time I bought one was because you can see how small these boxes are. And when you're working with number six wire, it's really hard to handle and be able to fit it all in the box or at least the amount that you would need to be in the box. But they have since then extended, as you can see, the face of this sticks out further on the 50 amp than on the 30 amp. So this is giving a little bit more space inside of this 50 amp to be able to work with those bigger wires. All right, so now let's look at the generator cords. And I don't think it takes a genius to figure out which one of these is the 30 amp and the 50 amp. So yes, of course, this smaller one is the 30 amp and this bigger one is the 50 amp. So the 50 amp cord is all number six wires running through it. It's jacketed, so it has protection from the elements. The 30 amp cord is all number 10 wires running throughout it. They both have waterproof, or at least I should say water resistant 
sheathing on both of the cables. So that's really important. You can't just buy any kind of cable to use for your generators. You wanna make sure that they're weather tight as well. Also make sure that you're not making up a cord like some of these people that are back feeding their laundry outlets. Your generator cord should have a male end and then also a female end. And this is what actually plugs into the power inlet box. Again, on the 30 amp, there's those four prongs. And then on the female end, there's four prongs on there as well. But as you can see, the difference between the 50 amp and the 30 amp cord is just massive. The prongs are way, way bigger on the 50 amp as compared to the 30 amp cord. And the same thing goes for the female ends. You see how much difference in size there is between the female ends also on the cords. So I show you all of this because there is a huge difference in getting the right materials for your particular application because if you were to go with a cord or wiring that is too small, say you're going with a 50 amp power inlet box and say you install 10 gauge wire into that power inlet box, but you're operating with this cord and a generator that's capable of supplying 50 amps, you're creating a serious fire hazard by having that smaller wiring going from your power inlet box to then your house. So the wiring needs to be big enough for your particular application. So now let's get into talking about that and figuring out how we know what we need. Hey, really quickly, if you're finding value in this video so far, all I ask is if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below, or leave me a comment or question down in the comment section about the video so far. It really does help the video to spread out to other people, and hopefully together, we're able to help them out as well. I really appreciate it. Let's get back into it. So what's really going to affect which power inlet box you need or which transfer switch you need is depending on the demand that you're planning on putting on your system. Now, most people probably already own a generator and they're trying to match up which power inlet box to get to match up with their particular generator. So as you can see, I've got a very large generator over here. This is capable of 12,000 running watts. I bought this so I could run my entire house, including my AC unit. And then over here, I've got a smaller generator that's capable of 5,500 running watts. So I use this in times where I don't need to power very many circuits. Or in my particular setup, I can actually run both generators at the same time. And this one helps to take the load off of my larger 12,000 watt generator. Now, most people probably do not have or are not planning on having a generator this size. Probably most people have a generator either this size or a very popular wattage is around 7,000 to 8,000 watts. Also, your generator might have something to say about which one you should be using because they will have different kinds of outlets. I mean, as you can see, this one has your standard 20 amp receptacle. It has some 30 amp outlets here and here, another twist lock 30 amp outlet, and then of course the 50 amp outlet. So if we go over here to the smaller generator, this one also has some 20 amp receptacles, but it only has the 30 amp twist lock receptacle on it. So this generator being a little bit smaller is basically saying, hey, we're capable of running up to 30 amps because it doesn't even have an option for a 50 amp outlet. So my best advice is plan ahead, figure out what all you're going to want to power in the event of a power outage and for how long, and then choose your generator accordingly. But don't just rely on the outlets of the generator that you have as far as what you're capable of. I'm gonna show you mathematically how to figure out what size power inlet box or transfer switch you're gonna need for whatever size generator you decide to buy or already have. So I'm gonna use this whiteboard here to show you how you can come up with how many amps your generator is capable of because of course your generator might give you some ideas like we talked about of what it's capable of but they pretty much never say on them exactly what their amperage rating is so the equation for finding amperage is wattage divided by voltage equals amperage all right, when I'm talking about wattage, when you look at your generator, it's probably gonna have two sets of wattage numbers on it. The higher number is going to be your peak or your surge watts, and the lower number is going to be your maximum running watts. The running wattage is what your generator is capable of running at for an extended amount of time before a breaker is gonna trip 
or the generator is going to shut down. So when we're trying to figure out what amperage we need for a power inlet box or a transfer switch, we're going to go off of that lower running watt number. So if you have a generator that has a running wattage of 7,000 watts, for instance, then you're going to divide that number by the voltage, which in almost every application when installing it with a power inlet box with an interlock kit or a transfer switch, your voltage, you're going to want to figure that at 200 and 40 volts. So if you take your 7,000 watts and you divide it by 240 volts, you're going to come up with 29.166 and it repeats. So you basically have 29 amps on a 7,000 watt generator. So what that's telling you is for your particular generator, there is no reason to go above a 30 amp power inlet box. So if we take my larger generator, for instance, which is 12,000 running watts, and we divide that by 240 volts, that equals 50 amps right on the number. Now there are some people out there that have larger generators than even this one. They went out and bought the biggest one that they could possibly find thinking they could run more, which Theoretically, yes, it is capable of larger loads. For instance, I believe Generac, one of their larger ones is 17,500 running watts, or maybe it's 17,000, one of the two. So if we take 17,500 running watts on that Generac and we divide it by 240 volts, we're gonna come up with 72.9, so basically 73 amps. So which power inlet box do they get? if their generator is capable of supplying 73 amps. Well, the thing is, most of your portable generators are not necessarily made to be connected to houses. They're most oftentimes designed for contractors on construction sites, so they can have multiple things plugged into that generator all at once. They can have a 50 amp and a 30 amp cord all plugged in, and it's capable of supplying that 73 amps. So in that case, while your generator might be capable of the 73 amps, you're still only going to get 50 amps of production because that's the largest outlet that is on that generator. Because if you try to go above that 50 amps, then the circuit breaker on the generator is going to trip and you're never gonna get anywhere near the 73 amps anyways. So just as a recap, 7,000 running watts or below, you're looking at getting a 30 amp power inlet box or transfer switch. Between 7,000 and 12,000 running watts, you're looking at a 50 amp power inlet box and going above 12,000 running watts, even up to the 17,500, you're still only gonna be capable of what your generator allows, which is still gonna be 50 amps because of the receptacles that are on the generators. Now, another incredibly common question I get on my generator related videos, and maybe you have this question as well, is how do I decide between a transfer switch and an interlock kit with power inlet box? I'm gonna post a video link right up here that you can click on. They'll take you straight to that video to kind of help decide what might be best for you. And down here, I'll post a link to how I installed my 50 amp power inlet box and interlock kit. So I really hope that this was helpful for you. If it was, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.